guys, and today you and I are going to pre-flight a Cessna 172. That's Cessna 172. 272 Sierra Papa is a 1998 Skyhawk SP model with a Lycoming IO360 under the cowling. The I in IO means it's fuel injected, and that means that we have to do a few checklist items a little differently than with an older carbureted Skyhawk. Also, I'm a renter pilot, so there are a few checks because of that that might not apply to owner pilots. Before walking out to the airplane, we'll assume you've done your flight, planning, uh, weather, and weight and balance checks. And if you're a renter pilot, check the airplane's maintenance records for recent squawks, as well as log the hobs and tack time. Also, as renter pilots, we need to make sure we know where the aircraft's certification and airworthiness cards are, where the POH is, and where the weight and balance sheet is. With those done, we can start our inspection. We'll start with the fire extinguisher to make sure it's in place and charged, and then we'll plug in our headsets, which on the SP it plug into that little panel just ahead of the door. We'll make sure our baggage is stowed in the back seat with the seat belt, not just sitting there. Then we'll remove that uh, control lock and stow it in the side pocket. We'll check to make sure the master switch and the ignition switches are off, the breakers are in, and that the compass deviation card is in place. Then we'll turn the master switch on, and note, hopefully, a positive response in the fuel meters. And we'll turn the avionics switch on. And listen for the avionics fan. An older Skyhawk won't have an avionics fan. Then we'll drop the flaps, turn on the landing, nav, and strobe lights, and do a quick walk around to the outside of the airplane, checking to make sure that all those lights are on. Back in the cockpit now, we'll do our enunciator panel test. And then we'll turn off the master switch and check the alternate static valve by pulling it and pushing it and noticing the corresponding spike and dip in the VSI. Now it's time to start our walk around, uh, beginning by looking at the rear and side windows and make sure they're clean and cleaning them if they're not. I'm going to check to make sure the baggage door is locked and secure. And then we're going to look at the underside of the airplane, the empennage. And what we're looking for, basically, especially if you're a renter pilot, are any dings or dents that could have been caused by previous landings and to make sure there isn't excessive oil leakage. Now back on the horizontal stabilizer, we're going to check the leading edge, then we're going to flex the control surface up or down a time or two, and note any binding or hesitation that might occur, and that counterweight it needs to be in place. We're going to untie the tail chain, and then we're going to uh, look at the rudder. Again, we're going to flex that rudder back and forth, and then noting any binding or hesitation. We're going to check to make sure that counterweight up there is in place, right under the beacon, and that those control cables attaching to the rudder itself are not frayed, especially where they attach to the rudder. Going to make sure that trim tab is in place, and then we're going to walk around to the right horizontal stabilizer, check the movement, check the counterweight, and check the movement of the trim tab, which should move slightly as you manipulate the control surface up or down. Then we'll check the leading edge of the right side horizontal stabilizer, this ELT antenna, and then the cleanliness of the uh, right side and rear windows, cleaning them if they need it. Then out to the end of the wing, we're going to check the ailerons to make sure they flex, and we're going to look into the aileron joint there just to make sure that those counterweights, which eliminate flutter, are in place and that the hinge pins are also in place. We're going to give the flaps a good shake and make sure the flap actuator rod moves but not moves a whole bunch. Out to the wing tip again, checking the security of the lights, and then the leading edge of the wing itself, checking for any dents or damage. Also going to make sure that those air circulation holes are unobstructed, and we're going to remove the wing tie-down chain. And then we're going to focus on the landing gear. Going to kick the chocks out, going to inspect the tires to make sure there's adequate tread, and we're going to make sure there's no hydraulic fluid leakage under that brake line just by putting my finger down in there. Make sure the brake shoes are still nice and thick. Now we're going to sump the fuel tanks. An SP model has five sumps under each wing and three other under the belly, and that's way different from an earlier uh, Skyhawk that just has the one sump under each wing. Um, but we are going to uh, find and sump all five at some points, swirl the fuel around in the tester looking for water and sediment. Then what do you do with the sample? Well, in some uh, airfields, it's okay to dump it out on the ramp, but I have a, a screened sampler jug, so I just go ahead and return my sample back into the wing tank. A little bit better for the environment. Now it's time to clean the windshield, and like so many other topics in aviation, there's some disagreement over the best way to do this. My preferred method is to use a commercial aircraft windshield and plexiglass cleaner uh, together with a microfiber cloth uh, because we don't have a hose out here on the ramp. So we're just going to spray the cleaner right on the windshield, and then I'm going to use my hand right on the plexiglass to dislodge any dried on stuff. And then I'll wipe the windshield with the microfiber cloth that I keep in my flight bag. And then I'll turn the cloth over and dry the windshield with the other side. Works great. 
Now we're going to go up to the nose, and the first thing up here we're going to check is the oil. This uh, model of Skyhawk, a 180 horsepower engine, needs six to eight quarts of oil. The dipstick says we have seven, so that we're just going to replace the dipstick. Make sure we don't uh, twist that dipstick in too tight, because if we do, when the engine heats up and cools down again, it's really hard to get out. Now I'm going to crawl underneath the belly, and as I said before, there's three fuel sumps under here, so we're going to check. Uh, we're going to take a sample from each of those three sumps and swirl and check. Now I'm going to check the leading edge of the two prop blades uh, for nicks or damage. I'm going to check the cowling and the spinner to make sure they're all secure and uh, connected on really tightly. And also we're going to reach in and check the alternator belt. should be tight. Now we're going to inspect as much of the space inside the cowling as we can see and reach. And we're just looking for anything that doesn't belong there. Bird's nests, any sort of obstructions. And if the propeller's in the way, we'll go ahead and turn it out of the way. It's important to make sure this area is totally clear. Next, a quick check of the carburetor air cleaner. We're going to check the inflation of the nose wheel tire as well as the strut and damper. And then we're going to check the exhaust, make sure it's on tight. And I use my shoe in case the engine's hot. We're going to make sure that the static port is unobstructed. And then we're going to move to the left wing. Check the air inlets to make sure they too are unobstructed. Climbing up on the wing now, we're going to check uh, visually check the amount of fuel in the wing tank. Uh, we did that with the right wing as well, but we did it when we were returning the sampled fuel back to the tank. Going to remove the pitot cover, and we're going to check that the pitot is clear of obstructions and the fuel tank vent clear of obstructions as well. Uh, going to check the stall uh, warning opening, make sure it's clear of obstructions, and just run down the leading edge of the wing, make sure it is undamaged. Check the wing tip for the security of the lights, and now moving on to the ailerons, checking the hinges, uh, hinges and hinge pins once again, and the presence of those counterweights. Give the flaps a good shake and make sure the actuator rod moves, but not too much, and that the tracks are firm. Now we'll remove the tie-down chains, and then we'll do our landing gear checks. Got to start by kicking the chocks out from underneath the tire, checking the tread of the tire. This tire doesn't look great, but there's a couple of more landings in there. The thickness of the brake shoes we check. We check to make sure there aren't any hydraulic leaks from uh, the brake line. And now it's time to find and sump the five uh, sump points underneath the left wing. I'm pretty sure I know where they are, so I'm going to take a little sample from each one of them, swirl that sample around, and check for sediment and water, and then back up on the wing again to uh, pour the sample back into the wing tank because I'm an environmental dude. Uh, several of these kinds of testers are available. I got mine from Sporties. It works just grand. So with the walk around completed, it's time to light the fire and kick the tire, and you can look for Skyhawk startup procedures in our next video.